I wish that the way things worked is that when you're doing something because it's God's will, it's automatically going to be awesome, easy, and smooth. But more and more, I am realizing that that's not always the case, but that doesn't make it any less God's will. So this is about when God's will is tough. God started to teach me recently because I was dealing with something that it had become so tough that I, I reached the point where I kept saying to God, you know what, if, if this is not your will, just let me know because this is ridiculously tough at this point and let me just know if I'm growing up on my own trajectory. And he said to go and read about Mary and Joseph, you know, the time of Christ's conception. One of the first parts that struck me was in, um, in Matthew, Matthew 1, 19, it says that Joseph had decided. So her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her publicly, decided to divorce her secretly. So Mary is found to be pregnant and Joseph decides to put her away. He had decided against that. You know, that part, I, I, I never really thought about the dynamics of that, that, you know, this is a young girl, a really young girl, by the standards of that time, by the way, who is found to be pregnant, and the person she's supposed to be with decides to put her away. <laughs> he had decided against her, like, that's, that's probably the worst thing that could have happened to her at that time. The fact that Mary was in God's will, you know, that she had heard this word from the angel, and then she had actually conceived this baby didn't mean that things were smooth sailing that oh Joseph automatically understood and you know took her to be his wife I was like oh great wife you obey God and all of that no he decided against her um I realized something that if if I'm looking with human eyes right at that point I would want to pity Mary but what the Lord then showed me was that in this situation if things had actually remained that way that Joseph had decided against her and not married Mary Mary wouldn't have been the person to be pitied because Mary, even though she's pregnant, even though she's, a, she's an unwed mom, she would have still been firmly in God's will because she was doing what God had told her to do, right? The person to be pitied would have been Joseph um, because he would have been the one who's out of God's will. But thankfully, God is gracious, God is merciful, and he spoke to him and brought him into his will. But even now that they're on this journey together, that still didn't make things perfect because you're going on this journey and all of your neighbors, all of your family in this time when everybody knows everybody's business, even though there's no social media, everybody knows that she's conceived this baby out of wedlock. How many people is she going to explain to that? Oh, you know what? An angel showed up and this is what happened and the Holy Spirit of God and come on. Like they will probably have just looked at her like, mm. and I found that sometimes you're doing something that is God's will. Sometimes you're doing something solely because God has told you to do it, but you look crazy to every other person. Like imagine how the disciples must have looked to every other person, how the apostles must have looked. You're saying, yeah, the son of God came, he died, he rose again. Okay. But how many people actually saw him rise again? But they, they left their lives behind. They left their careers behind for some of them. And they focused on this thing that God had told them to do. The truth is that Time may not always validate that choice by human standards. Mary probably lived with that whole Jesus thing for the rest of her life. Like, decades from now, people are still talking about, yeah, that's the son she conceived out of wedlock. You know, the apostles, some of them died without their choices being validated to other people, but they knew in their hearts that this is the will of God for my life, and I'm doing that. You know, God was saying to me that as long as you know the words that I've spoken to you, you know what I've told you to do, so just keep doing that. It doesn't matter if it looks odd to other people. It doesn't matter if it brings pity from other people because, frankly, sometimes it will. It may feel tough. This flesh, and I don't even mean like physically, there are things that are hard for you, there are things that are hard for you as a human being, but I'm finding that when I'm in the will of God and I'm submitting to that will, there's a, there's a way that the Holy Spirit is able to help you to just take on those things. And despite the fact that you're feeling the physical pressures, despite the fact that you're feeling the emotional pressures, He's able to give your spirit the power and give your body the power to go through these things. It has helped me to understand when 
when Paul would say things like, oh, we're pressed on every side, we're persecuted, we're reviled by men, and it's a lot to deal with, right? For, for many of us, it's probably not because we're directly preaching the word of God, but I found that doing the work of God is not, it's not just about standing on your pulpit, it's whether you're building that business because God told you to, it's whether you're marrying this person because God told you to, or whatever it is that you're doing, or you're quitting that job because God told you to. You don't even have to be standing on a street corner with a megaphone preaching about Jesus before the ways of God, you know, brings um, tough things your way. Um, the thing is to know that this is what God said and to stand by what God said. This is that period because there have been a lot of teachings you know about Christ's journey to the cross something else has been I've read it you know quite a few times over the past week and it keeps every single time it keeps reminding me of this lesson that God taught me with Mary and Joseph when Christ was going to the cross um, Mark Mark 14 where he's deeply grieved to like he's deeply grieved to the point of death he's in agony about this thing and he's praying once, Lord, let this God pass over me. Twice, God, can we do this some other way? But what, what is really powerful is that in the end, all that Jesus says is, well, not my will, but yours be done. Even though he says, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. There's so many times when I felt that way, like, God, you know that you could make this easy. You know that you could just, like, speak to all the people concerned. Like, if I were Mary, I would want him to go to all my neighbors and all of my family members and let them know that. I am the one who is doing this, you know. It's like, no. You know, so for Jesus, that was it. Not my will, but yours be done. And that's that's the place that our lives need to be at. That even when things are tough, even when things bring scorn, even when things bring pity, even when, we, when it looks like you're crazy for doing things a certain way, or to just look at God and say, not my will, but yours be done. Because in the end, especially when there's a lot of pressure, you know, external pressure, there's the temptation to just say, you know what? I'm going to go find an easier way to do this. I'm going to go do what everybody expects me to do or what even I, to be honest, sometimes it's not even what everybody expects me to do. It's like, this is not how I would handle this situation. This is not what I would do in this situation. But... Am I going to do it my way or am I going to do it God's way? I think that he also underscores why the Holy Spirit is so important, why it's so important that we're hearing from God. Because the truth is if you're not if you're not hearing from God, then it, it becomes impossible to say I'm in God's will. It becomes impossible to say God told me to do this. But if we're hearing from God, you know, if we can take things back to God and say, Hey, what is going on? You know, we can stand firmly. Sometimes you get into a place where God told you to go. You get into a job that God told you to take. And things are not easy. It's not funny. But if I can stand and say, God, you said, and that's why I'm here, then that gives me the strength to keep going, right? I love where James says that if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask and God gives abundantly. A lot of times, God is able to give us the wisdom to navigate those situations. That was something that <laughs> I terribly wanted to quit years ago. To be honest, I knew that God had told me that I was going to leave, but I hadn't asked how. It wasn't time yet, and I wanted to leave because I was frustrated. When the Holy Spirit said to me, no, I asked him, okay, you know what, you need to help me. Like, if I'm going to stay here, you need to help me. And he said, teach me about something to authority in that situation. Help me to navigate everything. God's wisdom is able to make things easier for us. It may not make it perfect, Paul was in jail, Paul was under house arrest, Stephen was killed, I'm not, gonna, I'm not saying you're going to be killed. For many of us, it's not even, like, it's not even that deep, you know, but these are present realities that are tough for us in, our, in the context of, of our lives in 2019. Um, it doesn't make it any easier, but if you know that it's God's will, please stand, please stick by that. Keep asking him for his word. God is so kind, you know. There, there, there's one issue in my life that I've probably asked God like maybe 130 times by now. Are you sure? Are you sure? And every time he reminds me of what he said. Sometimes gives me a new perspective on this thing and lets me know this is why I want you to keep going on this journey. It's absolutely not how I would have handled it. 
if it was left to me, maybe like six months ago, I would have taken a leap and probably crashed and burned. But in this time, I've seen just the things that God has been working through in my life, why he's doing it the way he's doing it. And it's just, it's good to get those glimpses of God's perspective. It's good to, to see things God's way. That's the privilege that Joseph had at the end of the day, you know, that, that he had a relationship in which God could send an angel to him and let him know, you a guy, this is my will stick with it this word has just been burning on my heart to share this you know because this was something that god taught me through mary and joseph a while ago but it's come up again and i just thought to share that once you know that it's god's will please stick by it it may not be easy it doesn't make it perfect it doesn't mean that the word is not rough but please stick by it because it's worth it at the end of the day especially because we have to have a mindset of eternity by human standards for mary it's like all of your life, people are going to look at you as the one who got pregnant out of the world. But by eternity standards, we're still benefiting from that. The apostles, the same thing, by human standards, it, it looked crazy for them to do the things that they did. But for us, from the perspective of eternity, from the perspective of we who are still benefiting from it, it's like it's mind blowing. You know, so just just stick by what God has said, said to you. The will of God may not always be easy in the working out of it, but it's so worth it.